Hello everyone, this is Hairy Nick. How are you all going? Over the past few videos, we took a look at all the information on some new games FFG are bringing out from Gen Con, but also at Gen Con, we had the X-Wing North American Championships. And I haven't done one of these Meta Watch videos in a while. It's really time that we had a look at the meta post points change and just see what's going on in the world of X-Wing. Now, before we dive into these stats, I just want to make mention, I'm doing these videos a little bit differently now. Now that we have seven factions and as they all seem to be seeing play, I'm going to cut back on a few of the stats I used to do in these videos. It just adds way too much complexity to some already relatively complex information. Um, talking about things like individual ships and ship sizes kind of gets overshadowed when you have seven factions and stuff going on with that because it doesn't matter how good a ship's performing if it's not on a faction that's doing that well it kind of skews the stats a bit so on a tournament by tournament basis i will be focusing on the more relevant and interesting stats and indeed in this tournament we had a blend of all seven factions for the first time ever we're doing one of these videos and we have representation of all seven factions one list each for the Separatist and the Scum faction, two Rebel, Empire and First Order list, and three each of the Republic and Resistance. Awesome. And more to the point, what's going on here within each of these factions is very different from what we saw before the points change. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the OG factions and see what's going on. Starting off with the Rebellion, the one list that we had here was another Fat Han build, but remember Fat Han can no longer take inertial dampeners, and this is interesting because instead of Jake Farrell, we have Wedge Antilles. Now, Jake was a great option in the Fat Han build because he was able to sort of squirrel his way around the board and act as a great distraction. Wedge can sort of do that, but ultimately what Wedge is doing is he hits like a truck. And if you have a look at the way this is built out, we have Saul Guerrero on Han Solo apart from anything else. Luke Skywalker's still there to make sure Han can get his shots turn after turn, but this seems to be gearing way more towards aggression, which is good. It means we're actually going to get game states where the game progresses as opposed for just one ship kind of dodging everything and Han just mowing through their opponent's list. I think this kind of take on Fat Han will lead to some more interesting gameplay. That's my thoughts anyway. Also, it's great to see no representation of Princess Leia crew. Don't get me wrong. I love the card. I think it's awesome. Uh, but we need a bit more variety. I'm confident that this will still put up numbers in other tournaments, but a nice little break from it is not a bad thing in my eyes. Let's move over to the Empire. We have a couple of lists here, um, including the runner-up here with Matthew Carey, with a bunch of tight advanced V1s. Um, okay, cool. I guess now that all the degenerate stuff on the Empire has been made a bit more fair with the points adjustments, it's time for the V1 to shine? Cool. And I got a lot of messages after this tournament of people asking, hey, Nick, can you talk about this in the next Hangar Bay episode or just in general in videos? And yeah, I will. Don't worry. It's coming up soon. Don't worry about that. I always like the Grand Inquisitor's ability in 2nd edition. I think it's really cool, uh, really versatile. And this build with Sense Concussion Missile Fire Control System, uh, honestly, I wouldn't have picked him to work that well with Ordnance. But I guess there's Ordnance and all of the TIE Advanced v one so maybe that is more leaning into what this list is wanting to do. It's kind of awkward if you don't take those Inquisitors, if you go for, I guess... 86 points worth of ships, you'd be looking at a tie defender. I can see why you'd sort of want to lean into just taking more of the same platform. Plus, initiative matching with Colonel Jendon seems to make a lot of sense. The Lambda is still proving that you don't have to take Palp or any crew for that matter to make it worth taking, which is nice. Um, it's definitely refreshing. I like that Lambda's doing a lot of different things that it did in first edition. Also, Whisper Rack. This is a blast from the past, that's for sure. Um, I don't think we've actually spoken about Rack in one of these videos yet. So, again, great to see. Big ships have been suffering in this version of the game up to this point. So, um, yeah. Also, this build, Hotshot Gunner, Shield Upgrade, Vader, Dauntless, and Proxy Mines. Proxy Mines is a cool include, actually. We haven't seen a lot of bombing in 2nd edition, and the way Proxy Mines works sort of gives it a bit of an advantage in the way that it worked in 1st edition because you're not losing an action in order to drop them. 
And it seems like a good, large, aggressive ship like Rack could take um, good advantage of that. If you were going to ask me what ship would take this, I actually would have guessed like a fire spray before Rack. Nevertheless, I like the amount of board control that you can use those mines for in order to better capitalize off Whisper as well. And yeah, Whisper, Duke, Passive Senses, Stealth Device, Fifth Brother. A fatter version of Whisper than we're usually used to, but Passive Senses does give you the ability to target lock, which seems very relevant. Look, if you're going to spend 82 points on Whisper, go nuts. It looks like you get a lot of advantage out of this. Also, Stealth Device is an interesting one. It's something that has not done so well in 2nd edition yet. Whisper can take extra advantage of it, because while they're cloaked, it means that you have a just a giant pool of dice um, alongside evade tokens and focus tokens. That extra dice actually has way more value than it usually would, and you're not likely to lose the Stealth Device in a hurry. So that's cool, that's cool. Let's move over to the Scum Faction, uh, my beloved Scum Faction. And what we have here really is not a representation of what we've seen the Scum Faction do so far in 2nd edition. Again, this is good. Variety is always good. What we're most familiar with here is Captain Seva or Old Terok. But um, Kira's fighters Cavill and Ketsu Onyo, yeah, that's, um, that's a cool pile of stuff. Let's take a look at this top list first, because apart from anything else, this list actually won the cut of two combined days. Which is impressive, considering we have Cartel Marauders. Honestly, not the best thing I think you could be doing with 38 points, but um, I suppose prove me wrong. It's interesting, this is a better list in general for this kind of platform. I mean, sure, like on the Rebellion, you could take cheap X-Wings or other stuff that has just three or dust tack. But on the Scum Faction, we have access to Torquemux and Torquemux Multicrow. That is so cool. Um, because what happens when Torquemux activates, he makes one of your opponent's ships, hopefully an ace, activate at initiative zero during combat, which means you get to hammer it with all five of your ships before it has a chance to shoot. This list is clearly trying to take as much advantage out of Torquemux as possible. And you've got to be so careful. You've got to make it work for you. You've got to try and isolate your opponent's ships. But if you do, hey, you can make the top of the cut in a pretty major tournament. Who knew? Also, Cavill, Ketsu, and Old Terok. A few ships that are just, I think, in the right kind of spot right now. Ketsu at a cost of 88. I mean, I'm surprised it's not Boba, to be honest. Ketsu's kind of fun with Maul, Shadowcaster, and Fearless. Uh, Maul proving that you can just spend 12 points on a force token, and that's pretty much just worth it. Doesn't really have a whole heap more upside than just giving you this platform a force token, so yeah, there you go. Cavill also proving that any points increase on Dulce Turret and Veteran Turret Gutter makes him still more than worth it. Combined cost of 54 points still feels pretty good, still feels pretty good. Old Terok Predator, nothing to say there. Pretty much the kind of stuff that we've been seeing. And it also helps that it is initiative matched across the board. Seems like a really fun pile of scum stuff, that's for sure. Okay, let's have a look at these sequel factions, starting off with the Resistance, with these three lists here. And this is pretty much a continuation of what we've been seeing um, from before the points change. Apart from the fact that we have Finn in the transport pod, which is kind of cool. I gotta say, I kind of undervalued Finn in my initial evaluation. But when I look at him on this kind of squad here, you can start to see the benefit. What you've got to realize what Finn's doing, essentially by just adding a focus result to his role, um, taking a focus token, it is actually better than rolling an extra dice. Assuming that you've focused that turn, just stressing to add a focus token is better than rolling an extra dice. It's nearly as good as just adding a hit result, which you just can't do in second edition. It basically never happens. FFG sort of cut that out of the game, and probably for good reason, because we don't like dice that are just way too predictable. Um, but Finn is sort of bordering on that kind of power level, as long as your opponent ignores him, and honestly, they probably should, because he's very, very cheap. Fly him alongside a bunch of X-Wings, maybe a Falcon and Chewbacca, you can see how you can just get a lot of firepower on the board for not that many points. Finn is 29 points. Feels decent, feels decent. Also, we have our favorite Wookiee here in Chewie alongside a couple of X-Wings and Finn. That feels like a lot of fun. Um, Chewbacca's ability is very powerful and spiky. I did make the comment um, a little while back on how we should best capitalize on Chewie. Maybe it's a bunch of transport pods or 
that kind of thing to make his ability work the best. What we have here is just value chewy basically for 68 points you just chuck them on the board and just see if you can get any extra value out of that apart from that you have a falcon that's initiative four and that's kind of good it's a shame there's no heroic here but yeah whatever seems like a decent value build if you can get a little bit of value out of it semi-consistently i think if chewbacca is like activating every other game it still feels all right also, yeah, a bunch of A-Wings, X-Wing. Um, the A-Wings don't seem to have suffered too much from their point increase. Given how heavily represented they were before the point increase, especially with these Initiative 5 pilots, I think it's probably fair enough. It still seems like they can function alongside pilots like Poe. And again, we're probably still able to trade off like the points on Poe and add it onto an A-Wing. Pretty much just mix and match your own combination of four pilots and go from there. Still seems very viable. Okay, moving over to the First Order. We have these two lists here. And thankfully this time we don't have Quick Draw in every single First Order list. Well, we have it in half of them anyway. Top list here is Quick Draw, a couple of other generic TIE SFs, and Scorch and the TIE FO. And the bottom list here is Two Upsilons and Kylo, which um, kind of feels like a take on Triple Upsilons, which is okay to see. I mean, this isn't the degenerate kind of stuff that Triple Upsilons were doing. There's no ultra-efficient upgrades that really make it impossible for your opponent to counter fly. But at the end of the day, you've still got a lot of beefy ships for your opponent to shoot through, which is great. And Kylo is just solid. Uh, no upgrades on Kylo, that's a bit different. But, you know, when you want these platforms, that's the cost. Seems okay. And yeah, also a bunch of TIE SFs. This seems like a lot of fun. No ordnance on them. We're focusing on Special Forces Gunner. Just making sure we keep shooting over and over again. Seems decent. Seems decent. Not a lot to say on these. I'll be curious to see what this kind of list can do when we get these new missiles coming out in the next couple of waves. Let's move along to the Separatists. We had this one list here. Again, just a bunch of Vulture Droids and something to fly alongside them. We don't have any tactical relays, which is interesting. Not that I think Trade Federation drones necessarily need tactical relays. I have spoken about this in the past. I think with things like Kraken, there are better ways to capitalize off that. And if you're going for a build like this, where you just want some decent ordnance and your energy shells, seems decent. Also, grappling struts and energy shells on the same build for all of these vultures. Not the kind of thing I typically go for, but I do like that if you combine those two things together, you do get that added upside of being able to latch onto a rock and fire energy shells. Um, yeah, really, really good. Great to see these hyenas are actually doing something in the meta. Um, we just had them released, and it's such a cool ship. I love the versatility of this. Um, you can go for the ordnance. You can go for your grappling struts. Everything can share calculate tokens amongst each other. And it just seems like a really cool, fun list to build. And nothing like any other list in this top 14. Okay, and our lucky last number seven faction, the Republic. Rick Olay being absolute MVP on this faction right now. Seems decent. Um, there was a lot of early speculation on Padme. Um... I always liked Rick better, uh, honestly. I know a lot of you watching this love the synergies with Padme and that kind of stuff, and you put on Duke. I just think Rick is a better, more consistent pilot at Initiative 5. That ability has a lot of power, and it's just going to get better the better you pilot it. And I just think that's a recipe for a great pilot that's going to see a lot of play on his faction. Top list here has a bunch of Gold Squadron Troopers. Yep. This has proven to be decent enough for 25 points. It's interesting now that the points gap between it and the Vulture Droid has widened that it still sees play, but 5 hull is 5 hull. You really can't sniff at that. Also, we have a couple of builds here that use Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan, and Rick Olay. I'm getting a lot of comments from people saying that Rick is basically just replacing one of those Jedis. I can see that. Initiative match with Obi-Wan doesn't hurt either, but yeah, look, Delta 7B... Despite the fact that it's gone up in points, doesn't matter. Still works great. Still works great in Anakin. Um, I like the variation in this build. R2A6 seems like a sick include on Anakin. Being able to make sure you always nail those range one shots, occasionally using it to arc dodge in the right situation. Um, but I think it's more about aggression than anything. Apart from that, these are very similar. But Carson, who won the tournament, actually used this... Uh, Heavier build version with Predator and R2 Astromech on Rick Olay, 
which seems decent. It means Rick can sort of go more into the late game. The other version of this list had a much bigger bid, and I think that really comes down to how you like to play it. My gut instinct, especially with hyper-efficient lists like this, is when you're playing it and you find you're not proccing the cards consistently, just cut them. Um, at the end of the day, a bid is pretty big, especially on a list like this. But obviously, if you are getting the kind of value that Carson obviously gets out of his list, it's the kind of thing you keep on. It Sucks if you're coming up against like Suntia or Vader and they take a big bid. Anakin doesn't want to deal with that, but at the end of the day, he still has a decent amount of aggression. Plus, R2 Astromech is going to help him survive longer. Hopefully, anyway. It's a really cool list. Must be really, really frustrating to play against someone who knows how to pile up this well. And I don't think we're going to see it leave the meta anytime soon. Anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your patience. I realize it's been a while since I've done one of these. We'll endeavor to do these more frequently. In the meantime, do not forget to like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting my Patreon as well. The best thing you can do right now in order to support this channel. It's been a huge help so far and I cannot thank my existing patrons enough. I'll catch you all in the next video.